In this video, we're going to introduce you to a very important device used in process control today, the transmitter. All right, let's go. First of all, let's talk about the term transmitter because it has more than one definition. In the telecommunications world, a transmitter is a device that produces radio waves radiating from an antenna. In the world of process control, a transmitter is a device that converts the signal produced by a sensor into a standard instrumentation signal representing a process variable being measured and controlled. In the early days of process control, the standard instrumentation signal was pneumatic, while today it is more likely to be an electrical signal. The standard pneumatic signal is 3 to 15 psi. The standard electrical signals are 1 to 5 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps. And just to add a bit more confusion to the term transmitter, some people in the industrial instrumentation field will tell you that a transducer and a transmitter are the same thing and therefore the terms are interchangeable. As mentioned earlier, the electrical transmitter output signal is usually a range of voltage, 1 to 5 volts, or current, 4 to 20 milliamps. In process control, it is understood and goes without saying that the transmitter output range represents the 0 to 100 percent of the sensed physical variable. For example, the transmitter would produce an output current range of 4 to 20 milliamps for a measured temperature range of 0 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 to 100 percent. We've talked a lot about the transmitter and the sensor. Let's have a look at where the transmitter fits into a process control loop. As already stated, the transmitter converts the signal from the sensor to the process variable, or PV signal, which represents the physical measured variable. The controller is the device that looks at the difference between the process variable, or PV, and the set point, or SP. The controller then determines what action to take place and generates an output signal that is a function of the result of this comparison. Controllers are either a DCS or a PLC in process control today. The final actuator is the device, such as a valve, that exerts a direct influence on the process as directed by the controller. The four major process variables measured and represented by a transmitter are pressure, level, temperature, and flow. Transmitters are also used in industry to measure other variables, such as position and speed, and chemical properties, such as pH and conductivity. The control valve receives a signal from a controller such as a PLC or a DCS, in order to operate. The controller compares the actual flow rate to the desired flow value, called the set point. The controller will produce an output to move the valve to bring the flow rate to the set point value. A control valve is a power-operated device used to regulate or manipulate the flow of fluids, such as gas, oil, water, and steam. It is a critical part of a control loop and is an example of a final control element. The control valve is by far the most common final control element used in industry today. A control valve can be operated electrically, pneumatically, or hydraulically. A control valve receives a signal from a controller, such as a PLC, in order for it to move, resulting in a change in flow. Because the PLC signal is electrical, the control valve may require a device to convert that electrical signal so that it can operate. A control valve has two separate components, the valve and the actuator. Valve bodies are of different types or styles depending on service conditions, piping layout, and desired application. The two classes of control valves are linear motion, and rotary motion. On a linear motion valve, the stem and valve movement is up and down. A common type of sliding control valve is the gate valve. A rotary motion valve, in almost all cases, rotates 90 degrees from open to the closed position. A commonly used rotary valve 
is the butterfly valve. The actuator is the device connected to the valve through the valve stem that provides the force required to move the valve. As we said earlier, the actuator can be controlled electrically, pneumatically, or hydraulically. The most common and the most reliable is the pneumatic actuator. The control valve receives a signal from a controller, such as a PLC or a DCS, in order to operate. The controller compares the actual flow rate to the desired flow value, called the set point. The controller will produce an output to move the valve to bring the flow rate to the set point value. Because of how pneumatic actuators are built, a control valve will fail to a specific position when a loss of the control signal occurs. As the supply air pressure is increased, the rubber diaphragm pushes against the spring and moves the valve stem down into the valve body. As the supply air pressure is reduced, the spring will move the valve stem out of the body. The position to which the control valve is moved, if a loss of signal occurs, is referred to as the failsafe mode. The type of failsafe mode depends on the application for which the control valve is used. The actuator causes the valve to close in a fail closed control valve. The actuator causes the valve to open in a fail open control valve. In normal operation, the force of the spring must be overcome by the electrical or pneumatic actuator. In the event of a power failure to the actuator, the electrical or pneumatic force is no longer present and the spring pressure forces the valve to open. You might wonder how much the valve opens or closes when the flow rate changes. Well, that depends on a number of things, such as the percentage of flow rate change and the diameter of the pipe. Regardless, the controller must be tuned so that it produces the correct response to any change in flow rate. This is most commonly achieved by using PID control within the PLC or controller. We have already created several easy-to-follow videos on what a PID controller is. Control valve actuators control fluid in a pipe by varying the orifice size through which the fluid flows. Control valves contain two major components, the valve body and the valve actuator. The valve body provides the fluid connections and a movable restrictor comprised of a valve stem and plug that is in contact with the fluid that varies the flow. The valve actuator is the component that physically moves the restrictor to vary the fluid flow. Three actuator types are used in control valves and they include spring and diaphragm, solenoid, and motor. As the name suggests, the spring and diaphragm actuator uses a spring and a diaphragm to move the valve stem and plug. A 15 psi pneumatic signal enters the housing at the top of the actuator. As pressure is exerted on the diaphragm, a downward force is applied against the spring which moves the restrictor. The diaphragm moves until it creates an equal but opposing force against the spring at which time the motion stops as the plug meets the valve seat. With no air pressure, the restrictor is pushed upward by the spring to act as a normally open control valve. To vary the position of the restrictor and flow through the valve, a current to pressure transducer can be used to provide a 3 to 15 psi signal to the diaphragm. At 3 psi, the valve is maintained open, and at 15 psi, the valve is maintained closed. Pressures between the 3 to 15 psi range proportionally change the flow of the valve. For example, a pressure of 9 psi applied to the diaphragm moves the spring and valve stem to 50% of operating range.
For on-off control of the valve, a solenoid is used to actuate the valve to a fully closed or fully open position. Applying current to the coil generates a magnetic field that moves the plunger downward against the return spring. With zero current applied to the coil, the spring pulls the plunger upwards to the fully open position for a normally open state control valve.